Hi, everyone. Welcome to our Visiting Artist Lecture Series at Anderson Ranch. I want to welcome everyone in person and our virtual participants as well. Thank you. Um, I'm Liz Farrell, Director of our Artisan Residence Program. Before we begin, please silence your cell phones. We will be hearing from two artists tonight, and after they um, both speak, we'll have time for questions. Rashawn Griffin and Sam Yates are generously supported through the Francis Gordon Kansas City Visiting Artists Fund. Fund. To begin, Anderson Ranch would like to acknowledge that our campus resides on the traditional ancestral territory of the Ute people, who called the Roaring Fork Valley and beyond home for over 800 years. Now, it's an honor and a pleasure to introduce Sam Yates. Sam is a Midwest-born designer based in Kansas City, Missouri. Yates's experience ranges from in-house media for Kansas City PBS, experiential design and wayfinding with dimensional innovations to brand experience and identity with DC firm Beverage CA. She has been an American in-house design awards winner and an American graphic design awards winner through Graphic Design USA. Yates currently designs with the Trends and Innovation Studio at Hallmark while teaching at the University of Kansas in the Visual Communications Department. She's President Emeritus for the Kansas City Chapter of the AIGA, a professional association for design, and spends her free time working with her partner in their shared studio, Yup Yup Design. Please join me in welcoming Sam Yates. I guess I'll wait for this bad boy, right? All right, so I'm gonna start your evening off with a little James Baldwin. What you have to look at is what is happening in this country, and what is really happening is a brother has murdered brother knowing it was his brother. White men have lynched Negroes knowing them to be their sons. White women have had Negroes burned knowing them to be their lovers. It is not a racial problem. It's a problem whether or not you're willing to look at your life and be responsible for it and then begin to change it. So as I mentioned, those are the words of prolific activist, artist, creative writer, James Baldwin. And he's one of the many powerful um, black creatives that I have stumbled upon in my journey. Um, and this piece in particular, when I was doing research for my senior, my undergrad thesis, I stumbled upon it and something clicked. I realized that um, change is kind of within me, um, but what does that mean? Um, what does that mean for my future and my practice? So I went to the Kansas City Art Institute, which I'll talk about a little later, and um, I was graduating in 2016, but we were tasked with a year-long thesis project. So in 2015, um, I started to look at what I wanted to do with my career and what that path was gonna lead me on. And 2015 was the year that, of Ferguson, um, when Mike Brown was shot in St. Louis, um, in Ferguson, Missouri close to St. Louis, and I started to kind of look at myself and my identity as a biracial designer, biracial creative, um, and I started to look at what my practice of design could be. So that summer, I started working with a fiber major and Mississippi native, and we started thinking about um, this idea of restorative justice um, through the arts. And I knew the power of collaboration, and together we came to know the story of Kansas City native Ryan Stokes. And Ryan Stokes was a young black man, 24, and, 20, um, and was shot and killed by a police officer in downtown Kansas City. He was shot in the back over an accused cell phone uh, and actually died with his own cell phone in his pocket. And something clicked, something hit me. Maybe it was my age, maybe it was where I was at in life, but I was like, that's my brother, that's my dad, that's someone really close to me. So I knew that there was so much more to this um, and that a project, a thesis was more than that. Um, there's gonna be a true place for this story in my journey. So um, in true designer fashion, I, uh, made a <laughs> I made a journey map. So I tried to map out all the different ways that I could um, bring restorative justice to, to Ryan. So I was in college, so please ignore my <laughs> 
Christmas type and my yellow, <laughs> my yellow type. But I started to think about a multi-stage process. Um, what would a social media campaign look like and how would that lead into a silent protest um, and what actual action could we have? So I thought about um, touch points, positive and negative feedback, how is someone gonna interact with this piece and how can I combat that or have a response to it? I was definitely in it. And so we started visiting um, the Stokes family, working with his lawyer, working with his mother. Um, we staged this little mini printing, um, this is his mother, Nairn Stokes, uh, this little printing um, event at his church. And we started talking to his community members and trying to figure out who Ryan was. We couldn't do a project about this individual if we didn't know who he meant to his community, who he was, and all of that stuff. So we CNC routed these um, blocks with different symbols of his life. And on the back of each block was a description about what that symbol meant to him. And we printed these on old school um, white tees, another symbol of um, uh, racism and power and light. There was a dress code. So all of this research and looking into the audience led into a 12-hour pro protest um, in Power and Light um, at the location, the corner where he was shot. And the journey map manifested. We held this 12-hour peaceful protest on the day and location of his death. And again, each stamp, we invited people to come bring their shirts. We advertised this so we could tell them about who Ryan was. And at the end, we had a call to action to end uh, the use of secret grand juries. Um, and so we had this uh, petition. We were talking to people. And I kind of discovered that I wanted to leave the world uh, better than I found it. And at this moment, that 12-hour protest, my heart had completely changed. The power of community, the power of education is truly something fierce. And so I kind of discovered my mantra and my mission to embody community in whatever I do moving forward. And so this is the third iteration of this talk, and I think this might be the best one. <laughs> it gets straight to the point, um, and I call it Get In Your Way. So just a story of different things that got in my way that led me here. So this is baby Sam, um, and this is like my favorite photo of me because I feel like I still hold this energy. <laughs> so my family has always been supportive of my creative endeavors, um, and even to the point where my aunt asked me to paint the entire <laughs> basement bedroom into like a Filipino island oasis. Um, and you'd think that a creative path was totally obvious, but everyone in my family was in the medical field, and I never allowed myself to think that a creative career was even viable. And then after one too many throw-ups at the hospital, I was like, this is not it. And um, so I was really battling what I wanted to do um, and with my creative career and what I wanted to do with the career. So I had an awesome art teacher who um, worked with Marilyn Stockstad at the Nelson Atkins and um, got me into the Kansas City Art Institute. Um, in high school, I would do the uh, backgrounds for all the plays, and this is one that I did my senior year, um, and I'm not saying it's like massive, incredible work, um, but it, I did this all by myself, six 10-foot panels um, for Canterbury Tales, um, and my art teacher ended up bringing my mom into the school and told her that um, your daughter's not going to be a nurse. And I decided in that moment, I won't be what I'm not. And if you haven't read The Joy Luck Club, um, do put it on your list. It's a great um, insight into Asian culture. And then um, when I, as I was reading it, this totally stuck out to me. So I embarked on my journey at the Kansas City Art Institute. I found my best friends. I found my community. I fell in love at KCAI. I painted. I imagined what old Sam would look like. And what is art school without a tasteful nude? I discovered design, and it taught me how people think. I learned about semiotics, applied communications theory, and I realized that what we put into the earth um, really has an impact. And 
through design, I learned, um, you know, about advertising, which I think is one of the most powerful forms of visual communication because it has so much impact. And that's kind of where my journey has led me, is to kind of infiltrating those um, creative spaces and making meaningful um, impact. And then I also met my husband um, at the Art Institute. <laughs> I also met um, some incredible mentors. Um, down here on the um, right is one of my um, professors, Kelly Ludwig. Um, she's an incredible folk, um, folk artist and photographer, and she really kind of pushed me into just pouring my all into it. So while I was in school, I took an effort to have eight internships, and I just wanted to try a little bit of everything. I made protest posters about McDonald's for wage theft. Um, I, if you didn't know, every anthropology has a wood shop, um, and they make and craft all of their in-store displays, so I interned there. Tried it out at the museum, did some art direction, letterpress, spray painted. I just really wanted to get all my hands dirty. Well, both of them, I only have two. And then I also wanted to, to try like everything I could at art school. So again, I letter pressed, I metal worked, um, screen printed, block printed, did some aluminum casting. And all while doing this, I was heavily involved with AIGA. Um, AIGA is the Professional Association for Design. It's a, a global um, design group. It's also the oldest design group, or professional design group um, in the world. And I met people across the map who shared the same ideas as me. And because of the many people who encouraged me, I ended up becoming the youngest president of our Casey chapter, our first biracial leader, and I wanted other creatives um, to see me and not think that there were any boundaries. Um, but life is life, and I kind of found myself here, <laughs> like Floyd. And I just want to take a moment quickly as I talk about all the great things that I got to do um, to just acknowledge mental health. Um, it looks like the world was my oyster, but personally, my life was probably at its lowest around this time. Um, I was at my highest weight. I would shut down for days. My memory was down. Um, and most importantly, I didn't nurture the relationships around me. Also at this time, my partner was going through rehab, and I just didn't even know what I wanted to do and what, <laughs> what was going on um, in my life. So I sought mental health, um, I got a therapist, I found out I had depression, um, got on medicine, and um, have been seeing my therapist um, every week, I had a therapy session today, um, for the last three years. So I really am a huge advocate for mental health and just wanna put that in there as we all go through our ups and downs as creatives. And so, as you can tell, I love a good quote. Um, a good friend of mine told me that the end of a chapter does not mean the end of the book, and especially, a little paraphrase here, the end of the bad chapter doesn't mean the end of a book. So I made a promise to myself first that I was gonna nurture myself so that I could then rela um, nurture the rela my relationships with other others. And uh, my partner and I, we adjusted our lifestyles, and we happily married this year. So as I started to look at my professional career path, this is kind of what it looked like. Um, I had no, combination, no common thread. I didn't have specifically, this is Sam as this, this, this. I just had a combination of skills that were un uniquely me, um, skills that I didn't really respect until later. So I started to find my confidence and um, the height of the pandemic was kind of really big for me. Um, again, at the largest I've ever been and the most different my body's ever been, I found my confidence. Um, I signed with the nation, one of the nation's first black owned modeling agencies who respected my body. I became a certified yoga teacher and I grew a home with my best friend. And so now I teach and I do design research at Hallmark, um, essentially just kind of seeing what's the trends, what's going on in the world and how that relates back to the company, um, while also being heavily involved in our community. I do work on DAIB with the Chamber of Commerce in Kansas City and as well um, as with KU. And both of these jobs bought brought by creating, were brought by creating meaningful relationships. And I truly find myself in a position where I'm living the life that I want to, putting community first, waking up and actually enjoying what I get to do every day. And I realized that I wasn't networking through all this time, but I was actually creating connections based on shared interest, uh, just creating friends. So currently, 
I don't know what the future holds. I could have never imagined a path like this. And I'd recently embarked on grad school, um, specifically studying black graphic design with an emphasis in the Harlem Renaissance. And so to come back around, my previous internship connection um, came, back, um, came back, and a mentor of mine, um, Phil Schaefer, um, he's known, he's a mural artist in Kansas City, does a lot of work uh, nationwide, um, but is known at, by his uh, street name as Psych Style. And together we were figuring out how we could um, uh, make an event for the Stokes family for the anniversary of his death. And together we worked on this project um, that meant so much to me. We created a memorial basketball court for Ryan Stokes at a place he grew up playing basketball. It turns out his cousin was a Black Panther and also a DJ. <laughs> so he, if you can kind of see right here, or up at the top is kind of where they set up, which was kind of funny. Um, but we got to put um, illustration, design, and community all together to truly have restorative justice in action. Um, there was a minor basketball league scrimmage that was there. We raised money for his daughter's college fund. Um, and then this is kind of the original crew. Uh, Avery over here with the um, blonde hair. She is the Mississippi native and um, fiber artist. Nareen Stokes in the middle, and then of course myself. And so I kind of find, I found myself earlier this year at a place of what's next. So in talking with the Stokes family, we decided that we wanted to make a children's book for young girls and um, young boys, young children, um, about losing their, um, their father to gun violence. So that's what's next on the horizon. We did some research. And then as a teacher, one of the things I really like to talk about is Emery Douglas and his work on the Black Panther newspaper. So here at Anderson Ranch, I'm embarking on doing some character studies for those um, for that book, um, kind of organizing it. Um, I've organized my um, my studies in this fashion. Pictures all um, from Ryan and his family. And as I end, if there's anything that you glean from this, I know you're all very accomplished artists and um, doing a lot of great work, um, is this quote by Maya, Maya Angelou. Uh, Love recognizes no barriers, it jumps hurdles, leaps fences, and penetrates walls to arrive at its destination full of hope. So whatever it is, find your love, jump hurdles for it, and I promise it's there. Thank you.